Hey folks, we've got a couple of things we want to discuss today. One, the solar forcing study that we went over yesterday, the zodiacal light study that we went over this morning, and then because it is that time of year, we're going to be telling my favorite story in the entire world. Let's jump right into it. So this was the solar forcing study that we covered yesterday, and I just want to dive a little bit deeper and make sure that the important points from it are hit. So this paper as I mentioned yesterday, they really played politics. It's one of the things that uh, studies that tell the truth actually have to do these days in order to actually get past gatekeepers and be published. Uh, but after they played politics, they also managed to insert mm, some really good hits in terms of the solar forcing of the terrestrial atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere. And that includes this chart right here. Now, one of the things we wanted to mention was that on the far right side, where it shows solar irradiance, TSI, which stands for total solar irradiance, that is all that is in modern climate models in terms of the solar forcing to the atmosphere. They don't include anything else. Literally, all of these other things are excluded, despite the fact that there are literally hundreds of papers discussing how these aspects of the solar processes from solar particles, solar wind, uh, the energetic protons, CMEs, solar flares, actually affect the Earth. Now, I also mentioned yesterday that they're missing two things. Uh, in terms of one of the things the sun does up there, the turning of the interplanetary magnetic field, a purely magnetic field forcing element is missing from this chart. And in terms of the vertical coupling of those processes down into the atmosphere, this is, of course, missing the global electric circuit which actually has as much to do as the rest of this chart here. But essentially, with just this, and even without the entire picture, you can see just how much is missing from those climate models. Now, there's a couple of reasons why that might be. There's a very good chance that some of that has to do with the fact that it would kind of destroy their politicized propaganda paradigm regarding climate change. But also, I have to admit, there, there's more than that. Modeling how all of these things work is titanically difficult. And global climate models, specifically the global circulation models, are already exceptionally complex. It'll take supercomputers days, sometimes weeks, just to run one model. And that's without all of these other things in play right here. But it's important that we know they exist. And that really tells us something about how we have to look at, at the discourse surrounding the weather, surrounding the climate when it comes to planet Earth and what's affecting it. Next study we hit this morning, the zodiacal light, and they discovered a slight excess at the 0.9 AU mark. Now, this is not the first time we have seen the excess in zodiacal light, and we know that there are a lot of ways they can try to describe it, but the easiest and most logical way to describe it is how much dust there is in the solar system. We have seen from several other papers, dust is increasing in the corona. It's increasing in what's called the F corona, which is the highest part of the solar atmosphere. And dust is also increasing throughout the inner, uh, the inner solar system as well. This is one of the things we have to expect when the galactic current sheet is interacting as we believe it is now, based on the evidence throughout the planets and through interplanetary space with the energetic neutral atoms and the interstellar pickup ions. With this, we have really another confirmation that the larger scale processes in terms of the galactic magnetic field and the galactic current sheet are indeed taking place the increasing zodiacal light, the excess in light detected compared to what was expected. And, you know, bit by bit, little piece by little piece, every time they look at something, whether it's at Neptune, whether it's at one of the other planets, or whether it's the interplanetary space, every single study is showing the evidence that this galactic magnetic field, the galactic current sheet, is overtaking our solar system right now, of course, leading to the solar micronova at some point in the 2040s. Now, it is time for my favorite story. Those who have been around for a while know that this is the eighth time 
We are going to tell this story. Those of you who have heard it several times before, you tell me all the time, you never tire of hearing it. And for those who haven't heard it before, this is one of several key things that was almost like a cosmological hint that we're on the right track. So, Saturn. It is directly behind the Earth from the Sun's point of view. Right now, the Earth is directly between the Sun and Saturn. If you can't see it here on the JPL orbital diagram, here it is on uh, planets today, uh, which is always very accurate. I always check them between each other. This website's very accurate. So why does this matter? In addition to the fact that all the planetary geometries where there are alignments, whether those are oppositions or conjunctions, they all matter in terms of an energetic perspective. We had spent several years looking at these planetary geometries and seeing that the Sun, Earth, Saturn alignment tended to produce an excess of larger earthquakes in the days that followed. So that's something to be watching for over the next week. But after we had spent several years going over that with you, it was in our very first book. We had several videos on it. 2015 comes around and it's time for the Sun, Earth, Saturn alignment. And we had said, hey, we are looking at um, we are looking at an earthquake watch for this period. Now, we had only discussed it very briefly. We mentioned it in a couple of the shows. I was a little distracted because my first daughter was set to be born, Kira. And uh, many of you might remember seeing the, the photos from uh, Kat's uh, pre-birth parties and the festivities. We had a huge Kira is coming party. Uh, we had pillows with her name on it. Uh, and we had, you know, Kira banners. We were very excited. We, we picked the name and the name is very appropriate. Not only does Kira mean beam of sunlight in Sanskrit, but if you break the word apart, Ki is Egyptian for earth and Ra, well, sort of has an Egyptian uh, significance as well. So we, we came upon that name pretty immediately. And if you will recall, and you can go and check the records, May 22, 2015, while Catherine was in labor, I could hear my phone dinging. I obviously wasn't going to go check it at that moment. But when I finally had time to get back to my phone, I saw that a couple of big earthquakes had struck Kira Kira, Solomon Islands, as a result of the earthquake watch based on Saturn. And uh, it struck the namesake islands of my daughter who was being born at that exact same time. That is by far my favorite story. It really kind of struck me very deeply. I mean, it was already kind of an emotional process with my first child being born um, already. But to have the to have the big earthquake strike Kira Kira Solomon Islands, and have it be during an earthquake watch, based on the Sun Earth Saturn alignment, really kind of. I mean, I didn't exactly have a lot of doubt, to be honest with you, but it was a nice little, mm, boy, you're on the right path. Keep going. Uh, we've had several of those over the years. Uh, when the time comes, we will retell some of those stories about Earth's magnetic pole shift and the solar micronova. But since right now Earth is between the sun and Saturn, I figured it was time uh, at my daughter's cosmological birthday uh, to share that with you guys once again. So, just to quickly review, a lot of solar forcing being recognized by a lot of the scientists, even if it's not exactly being recognized in the global climate models, the UN, mainstream media. The zodiacal light has been confirmed to be in excess of the models, which we have once again concluded as we have every time this has been reported before to be a result of the extra dust due to the galactic current sheet. And uh, I suppose in the next week, We'll have our eyes open for some excess magnitude earthquakes. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.